Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another review video by the nerds here at Nerditudes. I am Ballistic, coming at you with a unit review that would be an amazing addition to any iRacing sim rig or PC gaming setup or even console gaming setup. I'm talking about none other than the Gamer 2 unit by the Butt Kicker. We're going to be going over unboxing these products, going to be going over the parts and pieces that come along with it, tips and tricks on how to successfully hook this up to get the most out of your unit. And we will also be talking about different volume and frequency levels, depending on how you're going to utilize this unit that correlates with the volume settings on your PC to try to alleviate any confusion that may come along with this technical unit. So again, sit tight. We're going to dive right in. Starting off with the unboxing, we are actually going to unbox the bulk of the unit here. I'm talking about the actual Gamer 2 portion itself. This portion is would attach to your chair, preferably, or your actual rig. Now, this unit is a heavy-duty unit. I'm talking this thing is solid. Uh, you could probably knock Mike Tyson out with this thing in one swing. Um, for good reason, this goes under a lot of vibrations, a lot of reverberations on there, so has to be very strong, very sturdy. Uh, hookup with this is very, very simple. Uh, they've actually adapted this clasp here, the actual hydraulic pole of your chair, if that is where you're hooking it up, will actually go in here. You are actually going to latch it and screw it. Um, with this, you want to make sure that this unit is as tight as possible. Again, this unit is going to go under a lot of vibrations, a lot of reverberations that are going on there. You do not want this thing to work its way loose. You do not want it to be loose at all because you will hear rattling at that point in time and it's going to take away from the overall effect of this Gamer 2 unit. So again, taking a look at this, they do include a lengthy cord that comes along with this. Uh, this cord here is actually going to run down your chair and will eventually hook up into the amplifier, which we will go over here in a few short minutes. Uh, key note on this one is this cord is lengthy on it. Uh, you want to have a little bit of slack in areas. Uh, they do send Velcro attachments to uh, secure this to your chair, uh, but again, you do not want it taut. Uh, if you have it taut, it's going to cause issues on the cord, uh, could pull the cord out of the amplifier, uh, as well as a number of other issues. Now, as we had talked about uh, in the intro, we were going to go over tips and tricks on how to hook this up. Preferably, preferably, you're going to want to hook this up to your chair, your PC chair, your iRacing rig. Um, if it does have a pull, that hydraulic um gas pressure pole that goes in there for raising and lowering it that's where you are going to want to hook it that is going to be the most solid point again utilizing the clasp that is there and making sure it's super tight now granted i understand not everybody has that setup some tips and tricks for the iRacing individuals out there that have rigs uh, something else that can be done is a lot of these steering wheels for their iRacing rigs are set up on metal stands using metal frames. You can hook this up to the metal frame. Again, metal is preferable. You are going to get the best result out of this unit utilizing metal. Uh, you can hook it to the metal frame where the wheel goes. Be sure it's tightened down and run your cords and leads accordingly. Tip on this, uh, those that do have a wooden eye racing rig or setup. I would not recommend hooking this unit up to anything wood. Point in case is wood absorbs vibrations and reverberations. So with that, it is going to degrade the overall effect of this unit, which is something that you do not want. So again, I would refrain from hooking this unit up to anything wood to get the most out of this unit. Now, with that said, we understand the unit. We understand the bulkiness of it. We understand what happens. This is where the low frequency reverberations and vibrations are going to come from. This is what is actually going to kick your butt, so to speak. So with this portion of it moved out of the way, we are now going to move on to the other half of the Gamer 2 Butt Kicker unit. I'm talking about the amplifier. Amplifier. 
Now, moving on from the actual Gamer 2 unit itself, we are going to progress into the amplifier part of this. Now, the amplifier part of this is a very important part, uh, just as the Gamer 2 unit itself is. Uh, it is a very heavy duty product. Uh, again, Butt Kicker does not go light when it comes to the quality of their products, which is a fantastic thing, especially with as much stress that this unit is going to go under. That is an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, with that, we are going to go over the front mounted dials. Now, the front mounted dials on this don't get overwhelmed with the front mounted dials. I mean, it does have a number of switches, number of buttons. Don't worry about that too much. Uh, as far as the input that we have with this, very simple. Power button, pretty self explanatory on the power button. Next button here is going to be your low frequency cutoff, your low filter cutoff, rather. So that low filter cutoff, we'll explain later on exactly what that means. The next one is going to be your high frequency dial, your high uh, cutoff frequency dial. Uh, we'll explain what that is and how to set that depending on how we are going to utilize this unit. Uh, next is actually going to be the high cutoff switch that correlates with that high uh, cutoff frequency dial. You do have a couple lights here as well that do indicate, uh, give you indicators on what's going on. The next two buttons, again, just like the power button, self-explanatory, their volume, pretty simple. Now, this unit here does have an additional port that can be utilized with a wired remote that Butt Kicker it was nice enough to package along with this entire unit. What that means is that once we get this dialed in and set up, we can make finite adjustments using just that remote, meaning we can tuck this away so that way it's not out in the open uh, for it to get damaged or anything else, which is an amazing thing. Now, flip side on the back, pretty simple setup on the back as well. There's not a whole lot that goes into this. Uh, again, Butt Kicker putting a lot of effort into this. That first port there is a port that all PC gamers should be pretty familiar with. That is going to be where the uh, power cord for this amplifier goes in again from the wall here pretty self-explanatory the next one is going to be a simple toggle power switch uh killing power to the entire unit itself again something the pc gamers are not unfamiliar with uh we see that on the back of our pcs quite often the next two rca ports uh your red and white are going to be utilized uh going from this amplifier unit to the pc and we will discuss that in hookups a little bit later on the next two are going to be the actual uh input hookups that come from the gamer 2 unit itself so the gamer 2 unit will plug in right here that is essentially in a nutshell all that amplifier is so again for what this product does and how technical this product is butt kicker has simplified it quite well for those of us out there that may not be as technologically savvy as others but now that we know about the Gamer 2 unit, we know about the amplifier. Now let's dive into exactly how we hook this unit up. Now, moving on to the actual hookup process of this unit. It's, uh, don't get overwhelmed when it comes to the cords. Yeah, you're going to have all kinds of different cords and everything else. Don't, don't worry about it. We're going to walk through on how to hook this up and the best way to do it. Now, frankly, power cords, I'm not going to walk through that. If we don't know how to use power cords by now, probably shouldn't be messing with anything electronic. So again, power cords, pretty self-explanatory. Now, when it comes to this actual unit, they have broken it down very nicely. Now, coming from the actual Gamer 2 unit, you do have this very unique plug. Uh, this plug only goes into one receptacle whatsoever, that receptacle being this big beefy guy right here. So with that, we're going to talk. Now, the important thing to know is that looking at this receptacle here and this end here, both of these leads, there is a specific way to hook this up. As you can tell, this lead right here is much bigger than this one right here. Uh, Take a look at the inside of this core. There is one that is bigger and one that is smaller. Be sure that you guys are hooking it up right. It will have negative effects on the unit itself if not hooked up right. So again, you take a look on the inside, you find what side the bigger end is on, and you be sure that you put the bigger end here. So again, this one right here is my bigger end. My bigger end is there. Now this is going to be a very tight fit 
you're gonna have to push it in and it will eventually go all the way through that now has connected your gamer 2 unit up to this end right here now key note there is a positive there is a negative on this hookup that correlates very carefully to your red and black hookups right here so as it goes red is always your positive black is always your negative be sure that you hook this up properly this is important and is key you do not want anything to go south with this unit all it does is slides right into the end ports of that and guess what your gamer 2 unit is now hooked up to your amplifier now moving on we have to hook up the amplifier to our PC with that they have included a number of different hookups we are going to explain the hookups as uh, in relation to the line out where your green audio to your speakers goes so that line out that's where this Y connector comes into play so it's got the 3.5 millimeter on one end male and then it's got two 3.5 millimeter female ends on the other simply put this end right here is going to go into the line out on the back of your pc where your green audio jack would go that's where that's going to get plugged into now moving on to the two female ports of it you do have a couple so this is the cord right here that we are going to use uh does have a red and a black rca on one end and has a 3.5 millimeter jack on the other so as you can figure that y connector that we have that three and a half millimeter jack is going to go into one side it's going to click into place nice and steady nice and sturdy good to go that's going to leave you one other female on the other end this is where your speaker jack is going to go so that green jack that 3.5 millimeter jack is going to go into this one this end it's going to go into your pc your line out of your pc where you had that green jack at before now moving on to the other side you have two rca ports so these two rca connectors right here is a red and black um, you are only going to utilize one the other one is literally just going to hang there okay um pick and choose whichever one you want i'm going to go black that end there is going to attach to one place and one place only on the back of here you do recall that you have these two ports right here you have a white which is your input and a red which is your output your line out we want it to go in to this amplifier so you are going to place that rca right into that white for the input that's it that red one you are just going to let hang down has serves no purpose whatsoever so again this cord here our butt kicker our gamer 2 is now hooked up it's been hooked up and mounted wherever we mounted it based off of the recommendations that uh, we had given you earlier in this video so that's hooked up now we have this hooked up to our input again right there at our input that is now running to the Y so right there is our Y this end here is going to hold our green for our speakers so that way we still get audio feed through our speakers and this end here is going to go to the line out on the back of our PC where we did have our green three and a half millimeter audio jack at before that in a nutshell you have just hooked it up the only other thing that we would have to hook up would be right here on the front and it's going to be right over here and that one's pretty self-explanatory it's an easy serial port that goes into that so again right there that's for your remote you're going to plug that in there's only one way for it to go in do not force these in if it's not going in then it's probably not going in right don't force them in there but plug that into that uh this port right here and you are set to go your remote is now set up again not super difficult it looks more than what it is now there are other other cords that come along with it here's a couple other different ones depending on how you are going to hook them up um, with that said you can hook this up with a 5.1 channel surround sound and it's going to change the way that you do it and how you do it 
uh, but you can also hook it up for game consoles. So again, your best bet on that, we are just showing you how to hook it up through the three and a half millimeter uh, line out audio jack on the back of the PC, because that's how most people are going to utilize this unit. Um, but take a look at that quick start guide. Again, they do show you uh, what uh, components and what wires and connections go where to slightly change it to hook up to those other ones. Uh, again, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to the butt kicker and they can assist you. They do have uh, different methods of customer service to reach out. But again, as long as you follow that quick start guide, it's pretty self-explanatory on how to do that. Uh, just know when they are talking about line ins, line outs, that you understand exactly where they are talking about. So now, that we have our gamer 2 hooked up to our rig or our, our gaming chair. We now have the amplifier hooked up to the gamer 2 unit and to our PC as well as now we have our remote hooked up. Now we're ready to dive into the settings and how to set this up depending on how you want to utilize this unit. And now finally, we are moving on to the final part of this review and how to video, uh, which is dialing in your settings for the Gamer 2 unit by the butt kicker. Now, up to this point, we have talked about the Gamer 2 unit, uh, which is attached to either your gaming rig or your gaming chair. Uh, we have talked about the amplifier uh, and we've also gone over how to hook everything up accurately uh, to get the most out of your gamer unit. Uh, now we are going to move into the settings, uh, tuning in your settings to get your desired effect. Now, most of these settings are going to be done on the actual amplifier itself. Now, I say most of these settings are going to be done on the amplifier because there is one thing that you have to set up before you even go through and start uh, adjusting these settings. It is key and it is going to be user preference, but it is key that before you go and do this, you are going to dial in your speaker volume level on your PC. When you dial that in, you are going to dial it into where you normally have it when you are playing any type of game or simulator. Uh, if you typically don't have it blaring, then don't have it blaring this time. Uh, if you typically don't have it super low, then don't have it super low this time. It is important to have it at your normal setting. Once you have your um, volume level at the normal setting, then we can start utilizing this here. You're going to power it on. You're going to make sure that this uh, this volume dial and everything else is at the lowest setting. So the lowest setting should be sitting at 40. We are going to be utilizing this area right here. Your low filter cutoff, then it, your high cutoff frequency dial, and your high on off switch. It's going to be those three. Depending on what you are utilizing this for is going to depend on what you are going to select. Now, moving back to your low filter on off. If you are utilizing this for music and music only, you are going to want this enabled. That is going to go, it's going to preset everything up for the best effect when it comes to your music. That is what you want. Uh, for those of us that are going to be using this for either movies or games, uh, most of us probably going to be using it for games. That's where we are going to be living, right in this area right here, that high frequency. That is what we want. So for those of us like the nerds here at Nerditudes, we utilize it for games. So we are going to want to make sure that that high on off is on. Now, these are simple push button. Both this one and the low frequency are both push button. They're spring loaded. Push in is on when it's in the in position. When it's in the out position, it's off. For games, we are going to want to push it in. Now, I have to reiterate this is after you've already had your speaker volume levels where you desire and normally run them. After we go ahead and turn on that high on off switch, we are going to adjust the frequency dial right here to the factory default recommended settings, which for games is going to be 80 hertz. So we're going to rotate that around right around 80 hertz. So just a little past the 70 mark right there, and that is the recommended setting for this Gamer 2 unit. Now, once you have these settings set in, that's where we can dial in and finite that a little bit more. Uh, to do that, 
we move right over here to the volume controls. You turn the volume up and down to increase, decrease those levels. You can do it there or on your remote, either one. Uh, that is where you are gonna get those finite little increases or decreases. You can also adjust your frequency a little bit to try to adjust that. I would not recommend going too far away from the factory recommended 80 hertz, but you can dial that in just a little bit as well, but be sure 80 hertz is your starting point. That is important, be sure it is your starting point. Now, once you have that dialed in, and you can, again, adjust the finite amount on that as well with those volumes here, as well as the volume on the remote, you will be set to rock and roll, or in essence, get your butt kicked a little bit. Now, it is also important to note that you do have two LED lights here. You have a red one and a green one. These are very important. They are indicator lights. Just like stop lights, green means go, green means good. That means the settings are there. Everything is where they should be. Nothing is being overloaded and nothing is being pushed too hard. Now, for whatever reason, if you sit here and see that red light turned on, that means you are pushing the unit too hard. That means the, the frequency hertz are up too high. It is pushing it to, to the brink of something happening that you do not want to happen. So if that red light ever comes on, start dialing down some of your settings until that red light goes out. The only one that should be on should be that green light right there, letting you know that everything is A-OK. -okay. So again, we have now covered everything that comes with this Gamer 2 unit by the Butt Kicker. We have unboxed it. We showed you all the parts. We showed you uh, areas and places to hook it up, recommendations on how to do it, what to do, what not to do. We have gone over the amplifier, talked about that, the ins and outs. We've also gone over how to properly hook this up to your PC for either your gaming purposes or your iRacing, sim racing rig purposes. Uh, we've also gone over finite settings. Now, again, these settings, there's minimal settings that are input on there, uh, and a lot of it is going to be based right off the start on user preference, being that initial volume level that you play your games at. Uh, but again, we've gone over a lot of that. Overall, in this uh, review and how-to video, uh, the overall aspect of the Gamer 2 unit by the Butt Kicker is excellent. Uh, we've gone over uh, the quality of product. I mean, they put a lot of effort in the quality of this to make sure that it withstands anything that the gamers can throw at it, which is key in anything that is put out in the gaming industry. They've also simplified the process, trying to make it as user-friendly as possible uh, with minimal input, minimal uh, hookups on the user's part, as well as a quick, easy, uh, quick start guide to get everybody going on the right path. That also explains out if you're hooking it up through your uh, line out audio jack on your PC tower, if you're going through your 5.1 channel surround sound through the, the sub woofer output, or whether you are actually hooking it up through a headphone jack on the front. And is, they also cover how to do it if you're hooking it up to a game console. So again, they cover a lot of aspects on that, uh, which is very good, especially in the te uh, technological world that we are in. Uh, for what this product delivers, uh, it delivers exactly what it says it's going to. It adds another level of realism to anything that you are doing, which is great. It's very cost efficient for what you are getting. It's high quality. It's durable. It's cost efficient. It delivers exactly what it says it's going to, which is key in this industry. Uh, because if anybody goes back on that word, that just goes to show the level of quality of the product and the company itself. Uh, the butt kicker is not one of them. Uh, they have delivered on everything they have stated. And again, this is a very cost efficient way to add another level to your iRacing rig or your gaming PC setup at the fraction of a cost of some of the very more expensive uh, options that you have. Uh, so for those of us that money, you know, we've got to kind of watch money a little bit. This is perfect for us and this screams to us and this tailors right to us. And we appreciate everything that the butt kicker has done. So hopefully this review video on how to has answered some questions, has made things a little easier for you, as well as giving you a little bit of insight on exactly what to expect with this unit. Again, on behalf of Nerditudes and myself, Ballistic, appreciate everything going on. And again, you want to take a look at what they have to offer? Go take a look at thebuckkicker.com.